what time is it? Your show. Yeah, what time is it? Your show. Yeah, what time is it? Your show. Yeah, he's back from the dead. Your show. Putting it on the map, yeah. Saskatoon. Right next to New York. New York. Scary man. Yeah, what show, yeah. Your show. What time is it? Your show. Yeah, time to talk some shit, yeah. Your show. Scary man. Yeah, fun Maggie. Bark, bark, wolf, wolf, move on to treat, yeah. Keep listening. Welcome in. It's time for another edition of your show, the only live show on YouTube from 4 to 5 p.m., Monday to Friday, located in Saskatoon, coming out of a guy's garage that's run by a bunch of jabronis. Also, the number one ranked show that has two people with new haircuts on it today now you're wondering probably to yourself as we got the phenom on the ones and twos say hello phenom see him uh, how does a hand get a haircut i'm assuming they just shave the top of the hand is that right give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down ah there it is so he's got a fresh new cut and uh, well this girl is going in for one very soon and she's posing right now so we're going to jump right into the main attraction the reason everyone's here the maggie cam let's see what she's up to today our sweet little Marka. There she is. Hello, Maggie. God, she's so beautiful. Just like our friends over at Pet Planet on A Street, your pet's natural grocer, Mike and Rochelle, along with Maggie's boyfriend, Leroy, all there to make your life better as well. If you go there after hours, be it during the week or the weekends, you'll see Kirsten, Shar, or Chris, and they will continue to make your day better. The point being, the second you walk into Pet Planet on A Street, your day, and dare I say, your life becomes better. So, Thank you to our friends there, and uh, Maggie absolutely loves it. There, we call it her second home, and she always loves to go visit her boyfriend. And uh, our next guest here, her and I will be going over there to do another episode of Adventures with Maggie here, hopefully next week. I think we have it booked in. Take her on a little, little shopping screen. You can see what's going on over there. Now, every Wednesday, we have a Zoom meeting with our good buddy, Coach Number One. Coach Number Two is on his way in here right now, so... While he gets here, we're going to have to keep Adrian on the line, Bilarton, author, speaker, all-around amazing Saskatonian uh, living in Australia. We're going to get into this previously recorded segment first, and then once Coach gets here, we'll hop in and we'll check in with the land down under. But now it's time to say hello to Brooksy. Blow my bangs. So Brooksy was going to be in here, but instead we got this amazing, beautiful woman <laughs> New hairdo. Uh, excuse me, young lady. Who are you? And uh, tell us why you're here, please. My name is uh, Wendy Bangs Brooks. Ah. <laughs> Can we just call you Bangs for a while? Bangs, yeah. Bangs. All right. We got a new character on the show, formerly known as Brooksy. We now have Bangs, <laughs> Bangs, who made a new life choice that only took three years. And look at her now. Yeah. Bangsy? No, I don't like that one. No. Bangs is weird. Bangs is good. Bangs, yeah. Got just the right amount of tonage and all the other <laughs> stuff that you need. Yeah. So you I'm did it, dude. I know. I'm getting used to it. It's like kind of in my eyes. You were saying it's getting in your eyes. That's the biggest but deal. I don't know. We're, we're going to see. I can't touch it too much or else they're going to look kind of weird. But yeah, so this is my new, my new, new life look. now. It's a whole new look. I was <laughs> like, you, when you came in, I was startled. I know. I was like thrown. I think you. I thought you thought I was somebody else for a I second. Sort of did <laughs> I sort of did, and <laughs> I think you made an incredible choice. I think we can all agree. You look fantastic. Now, what is life like with bangs? Yeah, so far. Well, I just got them done yesterday. Um, for a bit, I thought I looked like I had a mullet. Okay. So uh, you've gassed me up enough to know yeah. that I don't look like I have a mullet nope. anymore. No mullet there. Um, but. It's just every once in a while I get some hair in my eyes. Um, I'm so used to tucking like my hair behind my ears, mm -hmm. and I can't do that anymore. Well, so you're fidgety. What do you do? You need a fidget spinner. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but it's just like the fact that something's touching my forehead 24/7, like and my eyelashes, like that's a little. Sounds like a challenge. That's a little weird. That's why I like do all my silly hair stuff that I do is just to keep it all out of my face. Yeah. Because it's always in my grill. So now so I got so sick of it. So now I just get it corn road out and yeah and mine's just go. all over my face now like, so you did the so. opposite of what i did yeah yeah but i have been, Gary. been nice. waiting for a long time to do it so i'm glad i did and it looks really good it's just like a lot like i'm gonna have to do my hair every day before oh. i used to like just like wake up and 
brush it and that's how it was just straight and okay here we go let's get into this how much time has this added to your daily routine well this or i guess you don't know yet that's this your first yeah thing. this yeah. morning like i did do my hair um so i curled it it took me like 30 minutes to uh. curl and fix my bangs and when i woke up this morning my bangs were like <laughs> I look like, I can a, like a porcupine. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So um, I looked at myself and I'm like, am I going to be able to fix these? But thankfully I know how to do so my hair. So is that, is that going to be an everyday thing that you have to do now for these beautiful bangs? Every day I'll have to for sure do the bangs, but I won't ha like, I don't have to curl my hair every day. Mm -hmm. So it should really only take like maybe an extra 10 minutes or less. So it's not too bad. Yeah. And again, you look like a totally different person. And you were beautiful before, and now look at this. Like it's, I Thanks. think that's a good trade-off for you, bud. I know. Well done. And hey, do you see this? What? Sorry to interrupt you. Look at that. Oh. Isn't that awesome? That's so cool. That's like you. such good advertising there if that's you, the you know, want to be on the screen. I was talking about it earlier. It's the, uh, the Cadillac of advertising. You get on this big screen along with the down there. You'll see it on the banners. And... Uh, we gave a very good deal because we're, we're pushing a lot too. So we're going to have our friend Maggie come in and do some in-person interviews leading up to the big day, September 19th, Aww. as uh, we get to set to help out the Fall Feast yet again. As you know, it's my baby and it's one of my favorite events of the year and I'm looking very, very forward to it. And I was uh, super happy when they said they wanted to advertise with us here. So here we are. Now That's we got awesome. the full meal deal going and it's also a great opportunity to show off how cool it is to have advertising in there mixed in with the network and the show promotion yes i really like that i think that's a great addition to the show and and you know to all of our lovely you know partners yeah so thank As you we continue <laughs> to grow so uh elmwoodyxc.ca is where you can go and then you will be able to get signed up and join us at prairie land for the big night on september 19th where we raise all the money so my auntie Susie and all of her bros can go out on excursions all around the city and uh, even outside the city and our province sometimes they go to west ed every now and then oh that's fun super cool and they go to the blades yeah. games and all that fun stuff so. i remember when i worked at Co cosmo i volunteered there for a bit oh that's my other one uh, yeah. we got the spirit of cosmo breakfast coming up that i'm emceeing which is Another oh, one of my babies. Fun. That's in November, so that'll be another good one. Yeah, I uh, volunteered there in like the senior section, so I'd go there every lunch and after mm. school, and and we would like bake things or rip some books. The and best but time, then right? yeah, but then every other day we took some of them out, so we would go on adventures all over Party like time. the city, and it was really fun. Oh. So that's what that kind of reminded me of is how fun it is, yeah. and I just like love like hanging out with them. Like they're just like so pure and happy about everything you're doing yeah. you know what i mean Set it for, i it, always say they have superpowers and that yes. superpower is just being real yes. all the time yes i and it's loved so it. good when when you and i are rolling around worrying about all of our little things that eat us alive and then you go go to cosmo or elmwood and realize hey guess what none of that matters let's just chill here and i know go eat food and <laughs> throw stuff and have fun yeah and i always say the people the people that run these places like our buddy charlene executive director at cosmo and uh, my buddy Big C and all of our buddies over there, uh, you have to be a very special human being to be able to do what they do there. And mm -hmm. I always say, like, forever grateful. And over at Elmwood, our friend Rachel and Maggie and all the people there, like, just really, really good, good human beings. So if you ever feel like you need a little reminder about what life's supposed to be about, feel free to hit up our friends at Elmwood and Cosmo. And they're always looking for more help and donations and anything else because it's... It's like one of the hardest things to do, and you would never know it when yeah. you talk to anyone there because it's such a passion project, and mm -hmm. that's the, the place to be for that stuff. I just <laughs> have to laugh a little bit on myself because previously you said Maggie was doing interviews, and I thought you meant the dog, and I was like, aw. <laughs> that's been an ongoing thing. With <laughs> Maggie Stevenson is her name. She's the uh, communications person and uh, the one in charge of a lot of stuff over with Elmwood, and so they always get mixed up whenever I'm talking yeah. to this Maggie, so I have to say Elmwood Maggie, and I, I forgot, so I apologize. Yeah, I'm sure it's still on, but like, <laughs> I, I first I was talking about the dog, so. Uh, anyway, guess what? Guess what? What's up? Guess what? what? Uh, we're starting off our podcast again. It's past our bedtime. Finally. Yeah, I know. So. What's the topic? What's going on? You're recording today? Yeah, me and Cora will be recording hardcore, today. Hardcore, uh, say it right. Hardcore, hardcore. Uh. Hardcore and bangs. Check them out at the Pastor Bedtime. And bangs. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to give a life update because it's been like a whole month since we've and done her, a podcast. And her life. Well, I guess your life has changed a lot too. Yeah, both <laughs> of us have like... 
She got from bangs. From bangs to IVF to Cora moving. <laughs> so much. <laughs> Cora moved into an incredible home. Yes. Apparently they got a hot tub. I know. I went. I didn't. Go, I didn't see the hot tub yet. But I went there the other day before she even started like painting and doing the front room. Was that on the Friday? She mentioned something about that. Been it, no. Last I was Friday. there before that. Okay. Sorry, I totally derailed you. That yeah. Backwards. No, that's that's fine. I was there before that, and yep. the house is like so nice, and the kids like love it. Aww. And she even has like a little like laundry chute where she like kicks the laundry into a hole, and it goes down to her laundry room from Can the top floor. Can we jump down it like Kevin McAllister and Home Alone? <laughs> no, they made it like real small, so I think for that reason. Exact reason, yeah, because it yeah. looks super fun. And then she has like this really weird old intercom that like oh, I love those you can things. press a button and talk to somebody outside that's from wherever. It's That's how you know you have a big house. Yeah. When you have to have an intercom to uh, communicate with humans. Yeah. And then, yeah, her backyard is amazing. She didn't have the hot tub yet, and they hadn't bought one yet when I was there. But I've seen snaps of her doing it uh, and working on it. So she's been, like, super busy. And But me and her, too, have been, like, painting at the same time and upgrading our house. So we'll, like, send each other stuff back and forth. So, yeah, we'll be talking about it all and everything we do. It's going to be a big episode. It will be, yeah. And then we're also going to do a, an episode about like going back to school. and. You're doing two tonight? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, a life update and then back to school. Okay. Even though we'll already be like two weeks into school at that point. That's but right. But uh, it's crazy like sending kids back to school as like a mom or a stepmom. Or the I content think, stays relevant no matter what. Yes, and so. I think just talking about like even us going back to school or being in school. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like what we got going on, and we're really excited. I made sure my microphone was working this Here time. Here we go. Here we go. I did the backups. I have them Batteries all charging. Are okay. yeah. yeah, everything should be good. I, I worked on it this morning before coming here. So I'm very pumped for you because yeah. we've been missing all these episodes. I'm also pumped for the hot tub party. She said she's going to have a damn party for us in the hot tub. Yes, I know. She said that, and then she's like, you can come over whenever you want. I'm like, don't say that, or I'll be there every day. <laughs> And, and now I'm actually kind of worried, like, what do my bangs look like when they're wet? I don't know. Have you know. not showered yet? I've not showered yet. I've not seen them. I've well, not seen I'm them sure wet. I'm sure it's supposed to go back to, like, whatever <laughs> it's supposed what to do, right? What if it was, like, straight across right over my eyes? So well, then you just enjoy this day where it was perfect. <laughs> okay, thank you. You live through this day, take a million <laughs> pictures, and just use them for everything. Yeah. And so it's like you got your one day That's what I've been doing, yeah. taking a lot of photos. I feel like I'm going to convince a bunch of people on my Instagram to cut their hair and... Um, because everyone's like, bangs are so nice. I want to have bangs and all this stuff. They literally changed the way you look. I it's know. It's changed the entire it's, it's look of your face. I know. It's, it's crazy. crazy. It's not. It is crazy. That'd be like if you cut your hair short or yeah. something. Or you shaved your beard. It's the same thing. <gasps> same thing. I would die. I would die. If you shaved your beard. You know how <laughs> I looked like I was 10 years old and I would, if I shaved, it would be all this, all the way under. And everywhere. Like that, all this beard is is just a big cover up for all the zit that I get oh. if I actually razor it. Yeah. Oh, you get little baby razor face. burn. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, it's interesting. But yeah, if I ever did that, like I always try to. I got. See oh. What it looked like. I punched that. That's right. I got lucky. Um, because like all the hormones I was taking made me have like really bad acne. But I went and bought this new like stuff from Sephora and it like got rid of all my acne in like two days. It was crazy. It's amazing. Yeah. Speaking of, so how is the IVF? So we're IVF all. IVF or BF? I v. IVF. IVF. I don't know what I'm saying. B. Um, In vitro. Yeah. Fertilization. <laughs> so look at us where we are now. Learning with I love this. Sort of bangs. Learning with bangs. <laughs> um, so I am not on any medication right now, so I'm feeling great, and I think that's why I did Emma's like whole room. I repainted and did yeah. Emma's room. Yeah, that was a long run on all that stuff, eh? Yeah, I was for like a whole month. I was like, but you just don't feel yourself, I just, and your body's going yeah, crazy. I was oh. crying over everything. Yeah, Anytime I ate, my stomach would like explode, and then my ovaries would hurt, and I couldn't do anything. So like, so bad. I know it was so bad, and then I finally got to like be done with the medication because okay. they told me that some of my eggs are ready for freezing and so I, I stay on medication until they like fertilize and grow into embryos and then they get this like blast of stage or whatever and then once that's done they if it, they're able to freeze them they usually do so that your body can like reset its hormones and whatever but they keep you on this drug until that stage just in case you have to do a fresh transfer so like I could have like been pregnant like 
right now if that would have happened. It's so crazy. So that was sort of like the, the dream right there. That's like the best case scenario. I, of thing? I, yeah, I would rather have them frozen. Um, okay. And most, and because I want to wait. I want to wait till November. So I have a f- like a two more months almost okay. left before I implant. But anyway, so out of all 18 eggs I got, right? Yeah. 16 of them were, were mature. Okay. Out of 16, only five of them fertilized. And then out of those five, only three we were able to freeze. So it's crazy so that I went from, and when they were counting them, I thought I had like 21. I think even on the show we're like yeah, joking about how I had, yeah. that I might have 21. I even thought 21 embryos, but you're supposed to get like 70% of that. So I thought maybe a little less, but okay. three is like way less than what I, what I thought we would have. So yeah, it, 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 took me a while because when they called me the day three is when they're all supposed to be grown and mature enough for freezing and they only had one ready and I was like devastated because yeah. I was like that's like I mean everyone keeps saying you only need one but like a lot of the times the first one doesn't take and so I was like kind of worried because like if that one was all we had and it didn't work we would have had to do the whole thing over oh. again for another twenty five thousand dollars and oh. we wouldn't have been able to afford it no. so I don't know what we would have done but Jeez. thankfully the next day one grew to a stage and then the final day we had one more and then after that they do they don't keep any more because they're not progressing a- as they should be so so now we have three and that's the update and now i just gotta wait till november and then in november i'll be on all the drugs again and and might be pregnant at it. Here we yeah go. it's crazy well from all of us here i hope that's how it goes because yes. uh, you guys have been through a lot so i really hope this is yes uh, this is what works and i do feel like this is a great example of what your show is all about, this show that we are on right now, because there's a lot of people my age and people your age who are thinking about doing this and they mm-hmm. have no one to talk to that's ever gone through it. So just the information you're putting out there, I think might help a lot of people who are maybe leaning one way or the other to make a decision on pulling yeah. the trigger on such a huge life decision. Yes. So it's. It makes me very proud at times like these on this show where we can touch on things like this that probably a lot of people are going through but not talking about. Yes, and then also the other day, which is something I should mention if people are actually thinking about doing this, because it is a lot of money and lots of people just can't afford it. But on Facebook, it suggested a group to me that was like a funding like charity group to raise funds for people who are in need for money for fertility treatments and so i looked at the website and basically it's like you just like apply and give your reasoning why you might need funding and you just kind of write like your history your income like all that stuff your debts and then you hand like send it to them and they like bless people like a certain amount of people with funding for ivf treatments which is like absolutely crazy that that's even a thing so me and brad were looking at it yesterday and i was like i might like do this did you just get really hungry no my tummy i'm I'm fasting i do the intermittent fasting and my tummy just go crazy i've been trying to hide it with sound (laughs) but that one i could that was so loud (laughs) my my stomach did that too like literally 10 minutes ago but not that loud that was a little crazy this one's like uh there's nothing in here give me some so i get some coffee yeah i think there's a lot of very very um, like amazing organizations out there and as we move forward we're looking at uh charities that we can help support and that might be one we pop right up there too along mm-hmm. with all the uh, other ones that we love to support here already yeah it's just so cool and i think like even just me thinking about it like me and brad donate a few to a few charities like once a month like they a couple of dollars they always come to our house and i was like hey can you donate yeah. once a month and we're like sure um so like that's almost one that i'm like we should like consider like putting on our on our list so imagine someone in your position that all of a sudden just finds this out and they're like oh my god this is Mm -hmm. this is a possibility now like that's life-changing stuff that's what it's all about yes and like even for us like we had to like look at getting a loan right so the loan was like such a crazy process especially because me and brad have other loans out and they need like and proof. those aren't easy. Like no. we've been trying to get this place a little loan to, yeah. you know, help us get started, Going. and it's so hard. All the hoops you got to jump. Well, yeah, because they say that they have lo- like, you need to have proof if you're self-employed of making enough money for two years, and I didn't have that f- 
because I haven't been full time like for two years. For two years. Yeah. So they told me that it was against their policy. And then they almost just like stopped there. And I was like, bro, like my bro, come bro, on, bro, <laughs> bro. IVF, bro, come on. Yeah. So then I literally was just like, they were like all worried. They were like, hey, so if we're taking 50% of your income, then like technically, I was like, well, like, you don't have to take 50% of my income for what I'm doing because what I'm doing only needs like my cell phone and like a few other things. Like I don't have crazy expenses. Yeah. Like here has like some crazy expenses, but like for me, I don't pay any anyone except for myself. I pay for my phone and a few other apps that I need yeah. and that's it. And every once in it's a while I, I'll buy a camera, yeah. but like, that doesn't need to go, you know, like yeah. that's not 50%. So I really had to convince them that I'm only probably using 10% of my profit on, on the business. Yeah. Um, so then finally I convinced them of that and they're like, well, okay, here's you. a loan. So, yeah. so that was like the hardest part. But if I would have known about that, it, I think maybe even it might've made me and Brad feel like less stressed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause we were like, what if we don't get this? Then, and then we like can't even, we already started this process. What are we going to do? That's so the stuff I'm talking about. Like there's probably so many people in that position and nobody knows about it. Yeah. It's you crazy. Know? So yeah. It's so awareness raising. anyway, it's good stuff. Oh yeah. Be aware. There's funding yeah. out there for you. If Hell you yeah. would like a child and you're struggling having one. So hanging out with our good buddy <laughs> bangs, you know, her from the <laughs> past our bedtime podcast, as well as uh, Wendy Brooks media, our social media go to right here. And uh, the best in the biz, I say it all the time, my mental health went a thousand percent higher once you took over all that stuff. So thank you for doing that. One more yeah. thing before we uh, wrap it up here. Rider game, you were at the Labor Day class. <laughs> yes, I was. When was the last time you had a rider game? Did you go last year? Last year I went yeah. with work. They took us in a limo, which was really nice, but it was a Sunday and then we had to work the next day. So Ooh, it was a rough next yeah. day, I tell you that. Um, so how'd it go this time? This time it was a lot of fun. Um, I wasn't drinking. It was the first time I wasn't drunk at a game. It's different. Yeah. Right. I don't mean that you drink. I mean it being at a game. So I think it was the yeah. most football I've ever actually watched at a Ryder game. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You know, when you don't have to get up and keep getting drinks, you end up watching the game. Yes. Like, and oh. Did you enjoy it though? It seemed like a pretty wild game. I did. End. It was so full. The only, okay, the only thing is we left a little early because they oh, were losing no. pretty bad and there was like six minutes left. Yeah. And all the things happen. <laughs> we want we didn't drive. So last time I was at the stadium when it was sold out was a Garth Brooks concert. Oof. And me and my friend couldn't find a, a ride to this hotel we we're staying at. We waited for two hours for a bus, a cab, literally anything, and we couldn't find word. anything. So we started walking. walking. Mm -hmm. And it's like down like sketchy part of Regina. Not safe. We walked for another hour and a half, didn't know where we were going because both of our phones were dead. That's mm -hmm. the biggest thing was both of our phones were dead and Bad move. then we saw cops with their lights on we went and asked them like hey like how far are we like where are we going blah blah and then the cop i think felt sorry for us and he drove us in, in his cop car to the <laughs> to, to the hotel we were staying at <laughs> so but so then i was worried about uh, this game because it was sold out i was like and i was telling joanne about my story and joanne actually came with us to the garth brooks concert but her and my dad left early and got to the hotel like five hours before we did so i was she was like i think like i'm fine with leaving early so when we were like keeping updated i was like oh my god they're gonna win and we didn't stay i was like just like getting i was like uh, but i wanted them to win it was like a weird yeah you situation. want them to win but you don't because you wanted to be there and you felt bad that you weren't yeah so anyway we did leave early but i go i got to see the very start of the game which i i don't think i've ever seen and coming from like a sports background like that's a lot of effort actually goes into like yeah. pumping the you crowd mean, like, up the and working with the blades and the rush. And yeah. Yeah. Sports better. Like sports. what's it called? Like sports producing, sports yeah. marketing. Well, I went to school for sport management. Management. There yeah. You go. I knew there was sports. Management. And so. Yeah. It's a crazy complicated. Yeah. And it's so much. Opening, so yeah. I got to see like the dancers and like the mascot entrance and then the crowd before screaming for the team to come out mm. like i don't know i started feeling like i might have anxiety in big crowds at this moment because i just Go like the club. wanted to cry and my heart was like full but I was, I was like but maybe it's a good thing like maybe i'm just like you're feeling adrenaline. i feel so, i felt adrenaline there it, is. it was so crazy you're getting amped up it was insane and i was just like tearing up like oh my god could you imagine and i couldn't i was like could you imagine being that football player like hearing this and coming waiting to come tunnel. out Oof. and then all of a sudden the fireworks are going off yeah. as they're coming out and it was like so awesome so yeah it was a really good game and it was so close throughout the whole thing that it wasn't like 
you know, like too crazy. And yeah, and then we did some shopping in the rider store too, which was absolutely Ooh. crazy huge. Uh, I got some really long socks because I wore the wrong shoes and the wrong socks. So I did that. Congratulations. Yeah, and then we tried, I had pierogies, which there were we fantastic. Love pierogies. Oh my God, I died over the pierogies. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah, we had a lot, of, a lot of fun and it was the most football I ever watched and we're sitting in somebody's season ticket season ticket so all these people were like wondering who we were who so my uh stepmom was like yeah i'm taking my brother's seats and they're like oh and then they're all and like buddies yeah buddies yeah. with us and we're just high-fiving every time there's a touchdown so Love it. yeah it was super fun great job dude yeah you'll have to you'll have to go to games with them i still haven't been to the new stadium i'm a horrible saskatchewanian i i've been been Four or five times, yeah. probably. Yeah. Oh, actually, I used to work there. To what am I saying? I used to work there for the Hilltops. Yeah. And I sold tickets out of there the first time it was op ever, like, open. At the Mosaic At stadium. the Mosaic Stadium, the yeah. Mosaic at Taylor Field. Yeah, I got hired through the University of Virginia. There Look at that. Very well done. <laughs> yeah. Her name is Bangs, formerly <laughs> known as Brooksy, co-host of the Pastor Bedtime Podcast. New episodes coming up Sunday? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. They'll be on the banner down there. <laughs> yes, and it, now the banner is not lying to you guys, so <laughs> it, it, they will it's be coming out every being Sunday. <laughs> legit. Thank you, yeah. as always, for doing everything. Wendy Brooks Media as well. If you hate social media, she will make it all better for you, and uh, we always appreciate all that you do, bro. Thank you again. Yes. You're awesome, <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll see you Friday. Yeah, I want to be here Friday so bad, so we'll see you then. Oh, hey, how's it going? Sorry, we were just prepping, and by we, I don't mean just myself. I also mean the guy sitting beside me, co-host of the Dude Podcast, hand to the throne, my everything. He just gave you a little preview. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Coach Mazer, a.k.a. Coach number two. Hello. How's How are everybody? you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm sending all these messages. Yeah, and we're working. On the ones and twos. Thank you again to Brooksy. Or sorry, bangs we call her now. Bangs. bangs. We've got bangs. You ever watch uh, Nick Kroll at all? No. The Kroll Show. Actually, our your show. Lots of the stuff we uh, use to do the imaging for your show comes from uh, the Kroll Show, which is one of the greatest TV shows you will ever watch in your life. I don't know. And uh, he has a character where it's all the, the whole thing is like, I got bangs, and then she just talks about always having bangs. It's very funny. Kind of like Brooksy did today. Very humorous. Very good stuff. She said that. No, but oh. we talked about her bangs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when you get bangs, you talk about it. She yeah. looks like Charlie's Theron, but not from what's that movie, Monster? <laughs> <laughs> but not that one. I'm just clarifying, like the good ones where she had a bangs. I think and I've seen a movie where she had bangs. She looks so good that my no. mother actually mentioned how good she looks. Isn't that nice? She sent me a I message. I can see that. And it, say, it says, uh, where is it? This is a very good one. Mm -hmm. Whoop whoop! Look at her. Looks good on her. I actually whoop, sent whoop. it to Brooksy. My mom likes to whoop it up. Lingo. That's it. Does Faye ever bring whoop, whoop? Your mom's bringing the Riz. That's the one. Yeah, that's the new one. I was also texting uh, LB about some business stuff. And I, and <laughs> do you know I'm so good on the ones and twos? Like, hey, thirty six. Like, yeah, that's right. And I just keep talking, keep talking. And then yeah. all of a sudden we're live. It's like, hey, live show. YouTube show. Yeah. Live. And I'm here. And you made it. And, and we I made gonna, it. And I we were going to be hanging out with uh, coach number one from Australia, but I think we went too long. We sort of lost him. I don't think he ever showed up. Maybe I think he was pretty upset. Days. Like he showed up for the the hundredth show. Yeah. And then you cut him super short. Yeah. And he was really angry, I think. And yeah. so he'll never be back. Yeah. I hope. I hope that's not true because I love having him. He's such mm -hmm. a good addition to this uh, little family that we got here, and we're looking to grow. Can we show this poster that's sitting in front of me right now? Yeah, I don't. I just don't want to get concerned. I like. I don't like want to jump to conclusions yeah, as to why somebody's missing. He wasn't there before, but it is a short week. Maybe he thinks it's Tuesday. I don't think the. I don't think they celebrate the same long weekends in Australia. I know for a fact they don't. They don't have a Labor Day. They don't have Labor Day on this weekend. They have other vacation days. Interesting. Well, I guess we'll find out the mystery that is. Where is coach number one? Call the Scooby-Doo game. Yeah, it's not where, where Kyle at. Where's coach oh, two? Man, I had the best time. You know, Kyle was my date at the uh, Josh Sonye wedding over the weekend. You mentioned he's this. the best date. Like, he could not ask for a better. He, he even allowed me to drive him out there in the Dodge Shadow. And he had all the jokes like, oh, so uh, 
AC works at least, eh? I was like, no. He's like, well, how about the radio? I was like, no. He's like, well, power windows? No. He's like, all right. Good, good car. <laughs> Rolling into the tile. He's like, are you sure we're going to make it there? What kind of uh, tires you got on there? 14s? Uh, probably. They're the amazing 12s? tires. Maybe 12s. Uh, the one reason that that vehicle is still running is mm -hmm. because it's been so incredibly maintained, thanks to uh, the bottom line, the greatest dad in the universe. He's always on top the importance of maintenance. So that thing goes over to our good buddies over at Pro Plus. We should talk to our friends at Pro Plus. Sure. Yeah, they got an awesome, awesome squad there. They're always taking care of not just the nickel plumbing and heating vehicles, but as well as our family vehicles, including mm -hmm. the Dodge Shadow. They put some new uh, tires on their last checkup, so they're actually really nice tires. So, so Pro Plus, we're going to be talking to you soon. We're going to get you uh, involved in this in some so sort of way. Pro Plus so much. does what? Again, everything? Probably. Tires, man. oil changes? Whatever you want. They can do it all. Because they're they got a plus on the pros. There it is. We even got a tagline for you guys. Pro Plus. They put a plus on the pros. Yeah. What are the you holding there? Plus What's going on? So I went to the Ryder game this weekend. Mm. Well, Labor this. Day mm. Classic. Go Rough Riders. Go Rough Riders. Win, win, win the game. They look so good in warm-ups. They always do. And what I discovered is uh, I copied a, a warm-up routine for our fall ball team. Uh, and any ball team that I coach, I try and implement it and baseball? infuse it for baseball. Yeah, uh, a guy from Trotsky Ranch showed a little warm up thing. He did some work with the, the Tampa Bay Rays at one point, and I followed him That's super at the cool. at the recommendation of Spud Hansen, and Spuddy! I watched his stuff. And then a he lot of people, a lot of ball guy guys, yeah, yeah, of course, a lot of guys, a lot of ball guys that are on the YouTubes and the Instagrams and the the Twitters, and I imagine the the snaps. You mentioned Twitter. Dufferin Avnet on Twitter. It's the middle one there, and you also see it in the countdown show and all that stuff. We've officially changed Gary Nichols' show to Dufferin Avnet. So we are now on the X. 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 I thought we were. We were. I'm following some. Yeah, something. You're the only person that was following Dufferin Avnet. That's amazing. So now I just took the Gary Nichols show over there, and so now instead of being the Gary Nichols show, it's Dufferin Av. Oh, smart. Yeah. Smart. Yeah, so now we uh, have a presence there. Instead Is it your name like still? Uh, nope. Changed no, it's, everything. Everything's changed. Well, my name's still on it, yes. Yeah, like the tweet I, of Gary's I just, gone. I just changed the, the stuff. Gary Nichols show's gone. Yeah. Your show or Dufferin Ave? Dufferin, the one that's written on all of our cue cards and mm. it plays at the start of the show. I, I don't know why I'm holding this up. I can see it. It's too far away. But anyway, it says right here, Dufferin Avnet, and that thing actually works now. I wonder Continue. if Phenom totally can zoom in on that. Does he have those skills? Uh, no, but I oh I would have, but I lost. Chairs are really bad. They're cranky. Yeah, that's next on the list. Okay. So I went to the Labor Day Classic, LDC, and um, anyway, the riders look good pregame. I noticed that their warm up routine was very similar to something that I was teaching the kids. I was very proud because it's cool seeing guys that are like three forty, six foot four. Moving like moving, year olds. Yeah, like <laughs> agile. <laughs> doing like the, the standing crane thing or yeah. pose or like the like knee up and outs and with a skip and you knee love up and the ins. knee up skip outs. Yeah. Can you give us one real quick? No, nope, not much here. That's not here. That's a different show. Dude, you did it on Dude Podcast numerous times. Yeah. I'll do it on Dude Podcast. Right. And if Tune it never in. has us on Pulse Power, I'll do New it there too. Every Thursday. Yeah. No, I don't want to be on that because she's her stuff's too too hard. I would do You did them. <laughs> My she kids has, did them. She has beginner ones that you and I could do. Yeah. I'm just. Or we could do the beginner version of what she's doing. Everything. But then it's kind of when I do those workouts. They are good workouts. We should start doing push-ups, 100 push-ups a day. Let's do it. Okay. Um, and then I, we should do other stuff too. So anyway, I went to this story. I'd be so yeah. impressed. So. Warm-ups are going the on. The riders are looking good, right? And I've never actually been, been to, uh, what is it called? New Mosaic? Yes. Or the Mosaic Stadium. Field. I've never been there before. Yep. Um, Except for across the street when I go to Regina. It's to the play same hockey. rules as this place is the Dufferin Avenue Media Network Content Creation Studios inside the Sautner Concrete Services Clubhouse. That's the new Mosaic Stadium at Taylor Field. So that is that what it is? Because yeah. mm -hmm. you've got to pay homage to Taylor Field, right? Right. Cool. I'm so I was there. The riders look good. Story. First, <laughs> they looked, they scored relatively early. Bain Jr., your boy. That's my guy. And you had a great. I, it wasn't it won't good. work. Yeah, you did the Bane thing bad. for a moment. Okay, fine. But it was Stop. loud. It was hard to hear yourself. Yeah. I was I was trying to hear myself. I couldn't really understand check. until you did this thing, and then yeah. I understood. Oh, it's a Bane mask. 
Yeah, the Bane mask was out. He, did, he looked good. He looked good. He only got like a couple receptions, but he, he seemed involved in the game. And what you don't appreciate maybe is when you just look at stat lines, like sometimes I, I do when you're in fantasy drafts or yeah. hockey drafts, you just get fixated on um, not the bigger picture of the game or not uh, advanced Individual. stats, just yeah. the, the traditional stats. And it's kind of like, well, what's this guy do? But he's very active. He's a very energetic guy. He's kind of, uh, he reminded me a little bit of um, hmm, kind of like a Wes Welker, Julian Edelman, Edelman type. Little slot guys. Kind of a slot slot dude. Very um, active at the line of scrimmage. Ooh, be, but even, yeah, like very quick. I wouldn't say his, uh, he, he, I wouldn't say he's, I don't want to throw shade or whatever. I wouldn't say that he's a, a full out sprinter or someone that's going to, Sprint 40, 50 yards and burn the pants off of some of these amazing DBs in the league. Okay. Um, but he's quick. So And that uh, Schaefer Baker was very impressive as well. He's awesome. And then who's their third guy? Uh, is also uh, Emelin. Yes. Emel, Emel, Emel. 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 And there's also Emel a guy named Ajoa the Joe. There's a guy literally yeah. named Ajoa Joe who's awesome. I like the athleticism on the riders. There's, there's some people that are were spoiled with how good they did at the start and then some people who were sitting around were very um poopy pants about how the game's going and there was a missed a botched Hold kick a return second. are you telling me that rider fans weren't uh half cap half cup full the whole game well they were there's a big fight that happened i saw that, saw that on the national on the attention yeah, yeah it was the great uh jamie and i aka nine balls from the green zone shout out to all their boys over there love you guys so sweet uh, he was posting about how unbelievably greasy it was that one of the I think Lucky Whitehead offered to buy number 33 in the brawl a, a drink or something for fighting a rider oh, very really? shady stuff yeah very unforward maneuvers by yeah, Mr. Whitehead who's white who's that he's guy? like a football guy player athlete Lame. I mean that's yeah you don't want to celebrate that stuff that's exactly. kind of embarrassing it's crazy I was there I didn't even know it was, this happened that's how big the stadium yeah. is it was on the other side you didn't notice <laughs> at all um so i went to this game and uh it's kind of disappointing how it ended but it was an exciting game mm -hmm. builds to their rematch or whatever yes. the banjo bowl yeah which will be a, i think a must watch absolutely and i'm trying to get on that rider bandwagon and i want to have a viewing party maybe we could i don't know how the weekend's going um but it'd be cool to have a viewing party maybe the next dude uh, podcast show could just be us LB, maybe Phenom's hand can make an appearance, and we'll just watch. Um, where would Phenom's hand, like he's eating potato chips during a game, where would those chips go? Right in here. Yeah. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah. Making a mess. And then yeah. if you, yeah, okay. Cool. So anyway. Smart, you can get under it and then get the crumbs. So I took my son, Jacoby, to this, this, to, uh, come to this, uh, here we go. to this sh uh, big, uh, big game and he had no idea what he was in for like he's not uh, a f big time into football and even watching sports uh, he'd rather be active in them he'd rather play baseball he'd rather play hockey um, than go and watch a lot of things he's getting to the age where he'll sit down and watch uh, the Jays with me or watch a hockey game but uh, football just when it comes on we're doing other things right we're busy so oh. he he didn't know what he was getting into so i tried to warn him that it was going to be packed and he was camping with his cousin sophia and willie that night before oh. and apparently there wasn't a lot of sleep because it got down to nine degrees which is cold when everyone's used to 20 plus weather um Good he didn't sleep them. much so he's camping he kind of dozed a little bit on the way there but we got there and he was just overwhelmed and what was cool um was at the riders and the marketing team had a bunch of promotional stuff going on in the park across from the, the field. They had dodgeball going on. They had a bunch of little kid games where companies were out there giving free knickknack, paddywax for little prize games that you could Love do and, and a bunch of other stuff. And there were some beer vendors and things out there. Just to be clear, all right. this entire tangent started by me asking, what do you got there? Yeah. Okay. So we're about well, to find out. I did realize, oh my watch that, I did realize that Coach One mm -hmm. is not here, mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to fill time. Dude, don't fill time. Don't ever fill time. This place so is cut a magical, to the chase. magical, no, you can tell your stories. The fans don't, don't it, like stories. Don't call it filling time. I'm saying this has been an incredible setup for what we're about to receive here. 
this payoff is going to be huge. Go ahead. Can you check your phone? Just sure. w wondering if um, your mom messaged how good I look. Not yet. Mom, we'd like to know how you this, it's feel. It's fine. It's fine. I got a back, uh, how does he look? backwards still, still hat. Still text. Don't worry. Mom no, knows what's up. So anyway, we went to this thing, and we ran into some good friends of Elite Play. I should, we should talk to Elite Play. Why don't we have... They did the. They do our shirts for the your, the your show champions, which yes. we ran two things. It's one uh, guy who won both. One guy's won <laughs> both. Still hasn't picked we don't have shirt. another event <laughs> yet that will have a little playoff run. We want some hockey drafting. It's that time of year. Well, it's, yeah, but I don't know. Will we do a complete team thing? That might be fun, or a player thing. Even better. Hmm. It is that time of year. I think people are football waiting. starting. So anyway, we ran into them, and he's just like, "Oh, there's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of uh, little activities you can do." Set up also. There's a guy that's promoting a movie. You should go check him out. And I was like, well, who's that? He's like, Diener's here. And I was like, Diener? Diener. And I'm like, like, Uvar Diener? And he's like, the Diener. Diener. So we went and got in line. And, um, you know, I forget his real name. I just think that when you've had a character going kind of like a, like a wrestler takes on a persona for so long, like this, this guy's been doing this. You character for live. so long it's, he's like living this like every once in a while living the gimmick living the gimmick yeah like he might not dress like this the whole time but i think he might also you know and he's got his little outfits that he wears but anyway uh we went there we got this poster diener's got a a new movie diener 89 really look it comes at out. that can you yeah Whee! oh over here camera one there you go Whee! camera one camera two Camera one, camera two, and, and her, her name, name was Cassandra. Cassandra. So anyway, Diener, as Diener 89, September 6th, only in theaters. The headbanger origin story. So you got to watch this thing. Go see this show. Uh, I would love to have Diener on uh, at what's some it, point in the show. And he's really, really cool dude. So he was, what's that? What's it say on the top there? What did he sign? Oh, yeah, he signed. So Autograph. he's just like, he's like, I'll, I'll sign this poster for you. And he's like, it's Ryan. I was like, no. yeah, how did you know? Like, must be a fan. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, no, you know what? Don't put Ryan. Put Coach 2. That's him. His 2s look like uh, American Zs, otherwise known as Zs. Um, <laughs> Coach Z, giver from Diener. So I'm pretty, I was pretty ecstatic about that. Some people don't know who Diener is. So cool. Um, like I said, he's an actor. He's infamous, kind of cult following classic of the movie Fubar, which is a mockumentary. Um, so funny. So funny. About a couple guys from Edmonton area, I believe. Edmonton yeah. or Calgary? Edmonton. Alberta, you could just say. Alberta guys. They love um, eviction parties and snurs. Pilsners. Yeah, and it just follows these guys that are... Uh, just giving her. Just giving her the whole time. You know what I mean? Um, this is, living life probably below middle class, I'd say. I, my email, this is how big of an impact these guys had on a lot of us. My email that I first got, first started, I couldn't come up with a fun name, mm -hmm. and I was way too into FUBAR, so it became getting or going. That's my email still to this day. After yeah. I got that go, I only had one email, and it was getting her going. <laughs> and the name under getting her, getting her going was D's Nuts, and it turns out I was sending uh, important legal <laughs> documents to lawyers and former employers with an email that said, from these nuts. And then it's getting her going. <laughs> I had no idea because it was so old. That's the impact these guys had. These I still guys, have like, an email for them. If you have a so son fun. or if you have somebody that before it was cool and this isn't cool anymore, but there was a little phase at weddings where you'd get iced and you'd have, be looking and someone would put a Smirnoff ice. I don't even think they exist anymore in front of you and you'd chug them. But before that was shotgunning beers. And... I mean, it, it existed years. before these guys, but these guys lived forefront. it, and yeah. everybody thought, oh, I have to be this um, degenerate yeah. drinker. And now and everyone shotguns beers. Shotguns beers. And they shotgun everyone. Not just beers. Got to have anything. one on the golf course. Like, who thinks that's an appropriate spot in the golf course? I think it's ridiculous. But it's pretty greasy. Yeah, guys, done a lot like, of them. it made it cool to be a little bit greasy and just let it let it hang out a little bit, even at – I've seen it at work events where guys are just getting a little greasy. I was just like, this isn't FUBAR. But these guys impacted cult classic. There was FUBAR 2. Then there was even their, uh, what was their show called? Their, they have a series. Yeah, it's a TV show. I forget. I faded. Sorry. Something to do with FUBAR. Sorry, Diener. Um, 
if you're watching. Yeah, he's going to see this for sure. He's definitely going to watch because he's coming on the show. Yeah, he'll, he'll be on your show. It'll be his he show for a little bit. Here, yeah. he'll, be, he'll come on. But anyway, so we went and met this guy. Um, my kid's just like, who is this guy? Like, what is this? Why do you like this guy so cool. much? But just, <laughs> even the picture you got with him. He looks so confused. Like, what is this? Dad, disagree. why are we taking but a picture with this guy? <laughs> Diener has a sweet uh, Glenn Danzig band, Sam Hain. Yeah. Sam Hain. What is the real word for the Gaelic festival? Sawe or Sawe, Sawu, Sawe. But anyway, Glenn Danzig pronounced it Sa- Sam Hain. And I look, I was like, sweet Sam Hain. And he gave me props for knowing what shirt he kind of ripped off and put Diener across it and um yeah made the trip worth it before we even got into the, into the stadium i want to give a shout out to kevin of hammer time roofing who yep. those are his season tickets that i was sitting in he um couldn't make it so he said here go go to the game bangs was on here earlier formerly known as brooksy and she had yep. mentioned that she was also sitting in that season ticket holder spot so do you have any miscommunication or any sort of chats about who you were and why you were sitting in the season ticket person spot? Like, do you have to explain your presence um, around all the other holders? No, the, the, yeah, there are... Or did they accept you quick? Yeah, I didn't. You know what? Or did you we know didn't that? do a lot of high fives because there was only a couple moments to celebrate. We just turned. I'd high five my kid when a good rider event happened. But there was a lovely lady that sat beside my son who had been season ticket holders. I forget what year she said since. Nice. The old, the old stadium. I don't know what she said, 13 or 93 or 03. There was a three involved. But they'd been there going for a decent amount of time, and those were their seats um, and sort of where their seats were so, Whoops, before in the old stadium. Uh, and then she gave us a little fill-in. You're, you're going to want to watch, you're going to want to hang out and watch warm-ups because the players sometimes will come by and give you high fives. Ooh. But if you're here, Gainer, after a score, rips by in the cart, giving high fives. So we were right up. Uh, right first row, technically. Right in, it. right in it, and got to see some cool stuff. It was good, a uh, good experience. It's great going to live stuff. That's it. That's the take home. Is you know you can make a million excuses not to go, but once you just suck it up and do it, you never regret it. And it's not just no. football games; it's anything. Leaving the house. That's what I always battle with: is leaving the house. It's once you get out there, it's so nice. I mean, when we we Maybe. hit the uh, the um, beer gardens with no. your son. No. Easy. When we were leaving right. Saskatoon, Grasswood, the Grasswood setup area. Um, shoot, it's leaving me. What? Uh, what about it? By Gemini. The land, yeah, by Gemini, yeah. that area. But Corman it, Park. No. Um, okay. But anyway, they, there's um, just fans. There's buses painted green. There's dudes the in their exodus. gear. They're just like, yeah. yeah, it's like the. How did Chamberlain the landing spot? The guy, Chamberlain was disgusting. Did I message? You called oh, yeah, me. I called parked you. for the highway. Yeah, I was parked on the highway. So there was they were doing spot checks, which props to the the yeah, cops. Safety first, love that. They um were pulling everybody over. They're checking for multitudes of reasons, probably doing little car safety checks, maybe liquor and drugs. Liquor and gentlemen. drugs, probably Drive checking sober, very important. But I don't know. I think when you've been sober for as long mm-hmm. as I have, yeah, maybe it shows. I don't know, but I were you sassy with them? No, they just gave me a oh, little nod. You got to I, walk just, I don't get pulled over anymore. Well, and even in my riding. greasy, I'm riding a greasy, not so greasy, but it's a 2011 truck, so it's to the age where, you know what I mean, it's probably been resold a bunch of times. So it's a, one of the most popular trucks to get stolen, so it's like sometimes I do get little yeah. side eyes from mm-hmm. cops because they're like, oh, is this vehicle stolen or are those plates real? What do you think they're looking for at a, a stop like that? Probably bloodshot eyes when like, you're slowing down yeah. that way. I, I would appearance. consider those obvious, like, what, the like obvious besides signs. the obvious stuff. But yeah, I think they're looking to keep everybody safe on the highway because it's, it's doing that. But Are it, they talking to you? Like you got your window down saying hello or they just passed passing? No, we just, the guy looked. They what were, I mean. they, like, everyone was full. It was, it was full. They had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They had eight I got you. Stops. All pulled they in, all pulled so in and, while and they're the parking lot was full. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they just, just like at A and W, they just send you down. Can you go park over here while we get your food Whistle together? Whistle dogs. So I got it food. passed right away. Whistle dogs. So good. So good. Man, I love a good. You whistle know what's dog. really good? 
scoring your hot dog just like they do at Goblin's Grill. Shout out Goblin's Grill. We should contact you guys as well. But we've talked about the numerous times. Scoring the dogs and then sitting, marinating your hot dogs. Yeah. Like even though it's cheap, oh. the cheap meat, but marinate that a little bit, I mean, and then barbecue, wow. barbecue that stuff. So uh, the little edges of the cut um, kind of char a little bit and and crisp up and turn up just a little bit. Looks so good. You know who's been pushing the whistle dog since day one? Relish is good. The Wing King. The Wing King and uh, Crazy Kyle, a.k.a. Guy Number One, a.k.a. the uh, first name in the Kyle and Gary Super Awesome Podcast, the old, old, old show that got us to this point. Those two dudes always, after every game with the Razorbacks, Wing King would always look at Kyle and go, Kyle, do you think we earned a whistle dog tonight? <laughs> The whistle dogs, yeah, but aren't they just limited? Apparently, they're back. They're back. You get them. Yeah. They're so good. I actually ordered one specifically for the whistle dog. 100% you would, yeah. Yeah. I you saw it on go. TV, and I said, oh, my God, they're back. And I thought it was Wing King you're and also Kyle, a, and I thought they'd all be happy. Yeah, you're also a I'm an easy a, target a for rib. advertising. McRibs? Is yeah, it a McRib? Was it Flintstones were what really made the McRib shine? Remember the Flintstones movie? Promoting that at McDonald's and they is had. Is that how it started? I think that's how it started. That's not the origin of the McRib. The origin Get story out of, of the McRib, no I think, chance. was Flintstone. Very interesting. John Goodman? I remember Enric Moranis. Don't swear. Sorry, Rick Moranis. Oh, there you go. My bad. Um, Ricky White. He's so good. One of the best actors of our generation. Man. So good. But anyway, moral of the story go check out this movie. Steiner! Guy's unreal. They call him the governor of Givener. Super cool. I mean, what more can you go ask? back and watch FUBAR. Now I want to watch FUBAR too. I, I mean, no offense to these guys, but I mean, their offerings, it's hard to, it's hard to beat the original. Yeah, I'll right? take anything. But you want to keep it going, yeah. and there's obviously an uh, audience that appreciate it that will keep going back. I don't know how they've done, but... And this is an origin story. That's totally different. So this is giving us idea, an idea of how Diener became... Woo! Diener! I mean, in 80... What is it? 89? Diener 89. It's so called. Diener in 89. So <laughs> Diener in 89. I was 8. So Diener would be probably... 15. So does he look like he's playing a 15-year-old? That's what I love about it. Like, what is it? But look at these guys that are in this. Like, shout out to this guy. Yeah. This guy's in all the, like, was in Bench Warmers. He was the guy that spent his life in the closet. Okay. You know, the closet guy from Bench Warmers. Then he's in been the in hall. some Sandler stuff. The kids yeah. in a hall legend. Yeah. This dude's Kevin from. Kevin McDonald, I think that guy's name is. Kevin, yeah. yeah. He's an unreal the actor. So these guys have gotten so good. Oh. They're okay. everywhere. And they're everything. everywhere. All of them. Yeah. They're, and not just in Canada. Like, they transcended. They're all over every show in the States now. They're they all just, like that's, kids in the hall guys. That's something. That's, an, that's a testament mm. to the perseverance of loving your craft and just keeping keeping yeah. things going. Like, keep giving her, man. Keep giving her. Like, just, just like our, our show, your show. The little show that I killed. don't care if we don't grow. Me either. It's so fun. I love this. For the next 10 years. Our, uh, our backers years. and investors might disagree with that statement because I'm sure they'd like to see some more come in. But we are having the time of our life and we're making the world we're a better place. That's going. all we want to do. You exactly. know, and we're going to fail. It. We're bound to fail. You have yeah. me on the show. Biggest fail yet. And he so. He says that. Well, realistically. Well, you you took a chance take on a, a chance, guy that chance, uh, chance, doesn't chance, have a lot chance, of time. Chance, chance, you convinced chance, that I should be on this show. And here I am. But anyway, then they got this. Yeah, the kids in the hall, they just keep going. What are they, 900 years mind. old? And then there's this dude. He's from BC. Really? And he was on Mad TV. Take a chance on me. Will Sasso. That's Will Sasso. Will Sasso. He's, He's so hilarious. Funny. Oh. That's an all-star so this cast. Show, this yeah, an all-star this, cast this is an all-star saying. Canadian yeah. cast. I don't know if that guy's Canadian. I've seen her around. She's been on the show before, obviously. She looks like she's really giving her. Like I don't know who that is, though. Yeah. Looks and like I don't know who it. that is. Unless that's... No, I don't know who that is. Can't wait, but look at the vehicles on the back. There's a Pontiac. There's one of those uh, those vans. That's a badass van. With dude. like a guy. Is that the one with the dude just protecting? It's either got to be a wizard on the side or a bikini babe holding look a it. sword with lightning look coming down. Look at who it is. Look like Shira. So good. Okay. And then like a Excite bike or like a little Pascal. dirt bike. So, so 89. Bum, bum, I can't bum, wait bum. to watch this movie. Uh and you know what? If he wasn't out there promoting it himself, 
wouldn't even have known about it. And that's the craziest part. Advertising is someone works. On show? What are you doing? They're right going to plug in too because we're going to play this out. You never got to listen to piano before, have you? You're always oh, yeah. talking about if I could hear the piano, I'd play it so much better. Oh, is it time? We're going to put your money where your mouth is right away. We're going to talk All about right. the Fall Feast once more. Because our friends at the Fall Feast have signed on with the, uh, the Cadillac package, which means we talk about it all the time. We get it on the back. We get it on the banners. We get it everywhere. Because time is running out. September 19th, it's going down at Prairie Land Park. You can get your tickets right now, elmwoodyxc.ca. And when you go there and when you buy, you are helping out my Auntie Susie and so many other adults with disabilities to be able to head out of their lodge or their home or their manor and experience a hockey game, a baseball game, West Edmonton Mall, maybe right here. We're currently trying to get this studio to be a stop for a lot of the uh, participants, if both Cosmo and Elmwood, to come in here and hang host out and make show. a show and host a show yes, and do whatever you can do. Yeah. Very cool. So that is the, uh, that's what's going on with the Fall Feast, and this is why we care so much about it. And it always sells quick, so I get with the catchy line, get them while you can. They're get going. them while they're hot. But Nickel Plumbing's got our annual table there, and uh, we always get to see a lot of friends and dignitaries. I always laugh. So one, well, actually, it's usually it's four times a year when I get to see, uh, be it the mayor of the city or be it some MLAs or MPs or all these really important people when it comes to politics and all that. Mm -hmm. And I'll be hosting these events or I'll be at them doing these things, be it with the food bank or with Elmwood or with uh, the Burn Fund over the Friends of Firefighters Association or with the upcoming Spirit of Cosmo Breakfast, which we'll be hosting and hopefully we'll be able to promoting the hell out of that one as well. But it's the, when I get to see all these important people and just give them their, hey, great to see you again. You know, and make some small talk with people mm -hmm. that are always wondering probably in their head, why am I talking to this guy? Nobody thinks that. Why do you I don't do know, I feel, I feel like I... I don't carry myself as highly as a lot of people who normally talk to dignitaries, you know? Hmm. Like, to be in a position where I can say to the mayor, hey, mayor, remember that time at that party when I shotgunned a couple beers like Stone Cold Steve Austin and then gave you a hug after you came out? You said, hello, how you doing? You know, it's just like those awkward Which places. mayor did you do that to? Uh, mayor Charlie Clark. And you actually did that with Charlie? Yeah, I came out and opened up uh, the big party over at Prairie Land, and I had my Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt, and I had my buddy Royal Anders toss me beers, just like Stone Cold Steve likes to do. Mm -hmm. Toss them, knock them down, get the crowd pumped up, and then, uh, Mayor Charlie Clark. And then I walk in the back, and he's standing there. <laughs> like, Mr. Mayor, good to see you. I'd shake your hand, but I'm a little wet. <laughs> yes, that's good to see you, Gary. Every time I see him now, it always comes up. It's those little things, those little I weird think, things. I think the... It's like I'm living in a dream a lot of the time. Yeah. I think you the know? problem is that um, we assume that our dignitaries or our uh, representatives or people we've voted for, or people, some people have voted for, whatever, mm -hmm. have uh, don't have a sense of humor and don't appreciate things, and that you got to be all you got to be. You're trying to tell me that they're actually real human they're beings. Just real human beings that are um, servicing the community. You know what yeah. I mean? Obviously, we they get paid to do such, and yeah. some people maybe they're. Uh, reasons for yeah, doing so. Someone here saying uh, too close to politics. Too close to politics. We got to reel it in. What did I say? They were just talking about. I was just politics. saying the real people, for the most part. Phenom, as he continues, keep going. I'm gonna get a. Is Phenom saying this stuff to you? No, it was. I was just. For <laughs> Can he dial you in? Can he just select which earpiece he talks to? <laughs> no, he he talks to both of us, and All he's right. like, "Hey, by the way, sound hearing impression, Cassandra and the gang, the best in the biz. You know how." Oh, just looking at it bugs me how that thing feels very awkward in your ear. You yeah. actually have the wrong one. <laughs> oh, no, it might be the right one. Anyways, these custom ones, you don't even notice they're there. They're so cool. Why don't I have a custom one in? Because you haven't went to see our friend Cassandra yet. I'll send you over there. Oh, I got you. Oh, we ready to do this thing? Things. Let's hit it. Make sure we can All hear right. this. There you go. Like I said, it's there. Are you going to No, I don't have it. I haven't prepared it. I haven't Your wrote show. it. So this guy actually wrote an entire song to sing over top of this incredible Frankie Fingers that uh, plays us out each and every day here on your show. One day we'll uh, we'll sing it. Oh, maybe we should just add it and see if people notice. And then they it, say, well, what, what did you do? What? How did you ruin this song? What kind of voice do we use? Is it like a crooner voice? Uh, your show. No, man, maybe like a weak crooner. Just your like, show. Your show. We could do anything. 
Me and you. We could do anything. It, uh, those could be the lyrics, too. Those could be the lyrics. Your show. To your show. Piano player. Pretty good. Uh, to Bruxy. Bangs. Sorry, Bangs. Oh, I already forgot. How like total transformation. Crazy stuff. Thank you for uh, stopping by and uh, updating had, us wait. on all the fun stuff. We talked about a headbanger, mm -hmm. and Brooksy had bangs, and a head full of bangs. And the phenom got a, an amazing haircut. Too. He does have a haircut. Why didn't we it's talk crazy. about that? I did at the start. Weird though, talked him up. like how the hand hair, I know how it can it gets flow. So long. It gets so long, and it's he's like, just got it combed like he's got over. His perfect. hair out the window all the time. I came in here and I'm like, that's a hand that probably has an interview somewhere. Ooh. So maybe he needs a, a raise or something. Or we just string him along and think that a raise is possible. Or we could get him a little body. Buy like him a the, body? He could be like the, ham, the hamburger helper guy. We should buy him. Yeah, you know? we should buy him a body. I think that'd be good. We'll think about it. Uh, to coach number two, thank you so, so much. Coach number one, I'm so sorry if we missed you, bro. Uh, we'll figure out what the miscommunication was there. We'll make up for it, I promise it you. It might have been coach two. I don't think he did anything, did he? I did nothing, so that's probably why he's not here. Well, we love him, and we appreciate him. We will be back tomorrow. I'm not back tomorrow. I'm golfing with Tim Shevelday. It's going to be so much fun. We got our football so draft. Cool. LB will Tim be the first ever show. It took 105 shows. We're going to have a guest host. Shevelday played for go. the Wings and Karma's the Jets. very real. Remember, do something nice. It'll start happening to you. I love you so much. Keep going. Fuck it up. Jets.